The term, companion, is used more outside the program, which is to say in fandom, than within the narrative. It was especially rarely used in the original version of the television program. While the first doctor referred to Ian Chesterton as, one of companions, as early as the Daleks, it was practically never uttered by the doctor himself until the John Nathan Turner producership. Assistant, was a far more common designation, being used, for instance, by the first doctor to describe Dodo Chaplet in The War Machines, by the brigadier to introduce Joe Grant in Terror of the Ottens and by the fifth doctor to jog the brig's memory of Joe in Modern Undead. However, companion, has been heard with greater regularity in other media, particularly that written since the transmission of survival. Indeed, big Finnish productions have an entire range of product called the Companion Chronicles, which focuses on telling Doctor Who adventures from the perspective of the assistant. Equally, Doctor Who magazine have taken to labeling the role that of Companion, as they did on the cover of DWM 446, when they announced the arrival of Jenna Louise Coleman. The tacit assumption between DWM editors and their readers is that, somehow, both groups know what the other is talking about, as if the word companion were a title whose qualifications and responsibilities were well defined. However, this is not the case. Neither assistant nor companion have ever been unambiguously defined in a narrative. Without a solid and universe definition, viewers are left to struggle with the term on their own. At what point, they are forced to ask themselves, does a supporting character become a companion? Is it when they travel in the TARDIS? If so, then Liz Shaw isn't a companion, despite being the clear co-star of an entire season. Is it when they're in more than one story? If so, then Sarah Kingdom, Christina D'Souza, Jackson Lake, Adelaide Brooke, Wilfred Mott and Astrid Peth must be struck from the list, despite the fact that their respective actors were given star billing in their respective episodes. Kingdom excluded as she was featured in a 1960s story, long before, star billing. Can Jackie Tyler be considered a companion, since she appeared in numerous stories and she traveled in the TARDIS, and she even helped the Doctor recover after a regeneration? Metafictional and story considerations are also a problem. Canton Everett Delaware 3 spent three months assisting the Doctor, traveled in the TARDIS at least once, and encountered him again 40 years later. Yet lack of star billing and the fact his time with the Doctor is shown over only two episodes puts his status in dispute. Then there are behind-the-scenes concerns. If an actor like Jen Marsh tells us flatly that she was not hired as a companion, BFX, The Drowned World, Doc, From Kingdom to Queen, and the official BBC website's own list of companions does not include her, is it reasonable to consider Sarah Kingdom a companion? If her, why not Brett Vion, who also appeared in several episodes of TV, the Daleks' master plan fulfilling a function nearly identical to Sarah. In a similar vein, the early story TV, The Keys of Marinus features two characters, Altos and Sabatha, who non-ambiguously joined the TARDIS crew as companions for the course of the single adventure, although they never rode in the TARDIS itself. Do they have as valid a claim to being companions as Christina D'Souza, who likewise never set foot in the TARDIS during her single adventure? This question can be expanded to the literally hundreds of characters depicted on TV, in comic strips and in literature who over the years have filled companion-like roles in one-off stories as they encountered the Doctor. Indeed some of these characters have been promoted to Ersatz companion status. For a time, Henry Gordon Jago and George Lightfoot could be described as just this. One-off characters from TV, the talons of Wen Chang who, decades later, were featured in an edition of the Big Finish Productions audio series, the Companion Chronicles, and later given their own spin-off series. However, they traveled with the Sixth Doctor in audio, Voyage to Venus and Voyage to the New World, making their status as companions less controversial. All these question marks. Determining who is a companion and who is not is one of the most common fan debates. It is possible by the fact that the television program itself offers no definition for the term. Though probably exacerbated by the BBC Wales version's greater narrative flexibility, the debate is hardly a new one. It's been going on for ages, fueled in previous decades by officially licensed reference works that helped mold fan opinion. For instance, the Brigadier, one of the people whose companion status is most hotly contested, gets some support for his alleged companion status from the book The Making of Doctor Who, in which two of the main writers of his era of the program unambiguously called him a companion. Likewise, the later John Nathan Turner book, 
the Companions was influential in making 1980s fans remember Sarah Kingdom and for enshrining her as a companion, albeit against evidence in the BBC archives. Still, though the new series put the term, companion, on more solid narrative ground, it greatly confuses the definition. Dot. What constitutes a Doctor Who companion is no longer clear. Sure, Rose, Martha and Donna were all companions. So was Captain Jack. But what about Mickey and Jackie? How do you qualify? Name in the opening credits, regular trips in the TARDIS? The Doctor kisses you? I'm no longer sure. Modern TV drama is so difficult. Stephen Brooke, The Guardian in Truth, though, it's never been very clear, even from a behind-the-scenes perspective. Though BBC Wales have confused things by putting single-episode guest stars in the opening credits, the classic series sowed similar confusion by often not listing companions very high in the credit list. Any definition of companion as co-star falls apart in the classic era, because companions were often listed after guest stars, sometimes after several guest stars and claims that they were regulars must be counterbalanced against the fact that they were often contracted only for a matter of weeks and lived under the threat of being unceremoniously dismissed mid-serial, like Jackie Lane was.